good. So um, one thing we're going to get started, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to kind of get back into uh, linear equations uh, for this. And to get started with linear equations, one of the most important things about linear equations is identifying and determining slope. All right. And we'll get a little bit more detailed into this. But the basic thing I just want to get you started with is, you know, at least how are we going to be able to identify slope between two points? And to do that, there's a simple formula where m, which represents our slope, is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So basically what the slope represents is the change in the, dip, uh, the change in your y-coordinates between the change in the x-coordinates for any two points. And if you guys remember, well, what we did last cla or two class periods ago is when we were graphing them, we graphed many different functions. We graphed quadratic, linear, cubic. Um, but I just gave you guys a table of values, and we plotted points. right? Well, so when we have a linear equation, we have multiple different points that make up our line. All right, all these different points lie in the line. So if we choose any two points and we find the difference of the y coordinates and the difference of the x coordinates, that is going to produce us our slope. So in this example, I have two coordinate points. All right. Now remember, when we plotted points, each point had an x and a y coordinate. Right? And that's what we plotted on the graph. That's why we spent that time plotting points. So you guys can understand, ooh, each and every point has an x and a y. So therefore, each of these, if I was going to graph them, would also have an x and a y coordinate. Now, to distinguish them for the slope formula, I'm simply going to label one as the first point and another one as the second point. Hence my x1, y1, x2, y2. It's just a way for us to distinguish between the two points. Now, to evaluate the slope between these two points, I'm basically going to plug them in. And please make sure, ladies and gentlemen, when you plug them in, that you utilize parentheses. So I have 2 thirds minus um, negative 1 half all over 3 minus 5. All right? Now, I know a lot of you do not like to use parentheses because you think it's just extra, extra steps that's not going to really help. But it's very important for us to understand this is y2 minus y1 y2 minus y1. Because the most common mistake that people will make is they'll say, oh, 2 thirds minus 1 half. 1 half is already negative, so let's just put the minus in there. It's minus a negative, which hopefully you guys remember is going to be the same as addition. All right. Now, I did want to include one with the fractions, because I did want to remind you guys how to add fractions. So for this case, remember when we're adding fractions, we cannot add them if they do not have common denominators. So the first thing I need to do is determine the LCD between 2 and 3, which is um, going to be the least common denominator or the least common multiple of 2 and 3, which is 6. So therefore, I need to determine what do I need to multiply 3 by, which is in my denominator, to get it to be 6, which would be 2. To produce equivalent equation or fractions, I multiply by 2 over 2. And then here, I'll do the same thing, but I'll use 3. So now, I rep represent that as 4 over 6 plus 3 over 6 divided by 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Is everybody following me so far? Anybody have any questions so far? Good? OK, well, we'll just continue. And if it comes to you, let me know. 4 thirds plus, um, four plus 3. Now we're adding fractions, and we have the same denominator. So we can just add the numerators, which would be 7, 6 divided by negative 2. Now, if you guys remember the beginning of the year when we learned operations with fractions, I have a fraction divided by a whole number. Whenever we're doing division with fractions, we don't like dividing with fractions. Instead, we like to multiply by the reciprocal. So what I can do is rewrite this as negative 2 over 1. So now I'm taking a fraction divided by another fraction, which we don't divide. We rewrite as the product right, of its reciprocal. So now my final answer is going to be 7 or negative 7 twelfths, which would be your slope between the two points. Did you leave that two days ago? You know? 